Let's identify the parts of a conditional statement, also called an if-then statement. We'll use this statement as our example. If it rains, then I won't go jogging. The antecedent immediately follows the word if. So in this statement, it rains is the antecedent. The consequent immediately follows the word then. So for this statement, the consequent is I won't go jogging. That's pretty straightforward. But depending upon the way the conditional statement's written, it may be a little bit trickier to identify the antecedent and the consequent. Let's take our conditional statement and rewrite it ever so slightly. If it rains, I won't go jogging. The antecedent is still the part of the statement right after the word if, so the antecedent is still it rains. The consequent may not be as obvious because we're missing the word then. The word then is implied in this statement. If it rains, I won't go jogging means the same thing as if it rains, then I won't go jogging. So the consequent is after the implied word then, which is I won't go jogging. Now let's rewrite the conditional statement one more time as a statement that means exactly the same thing and try to identify the antecedent and the consequent. The antecedent immediately follows the word if. But in this case, that means the antecedent is at the end of the sentence. It rains. Because of the structure of the sentence, the consequent has now moved to the front of the sentence. I won't go jogging. The word then is missing in front of the consequent this time because we just don't talk that way. We wouldn't say, then I won't go jogging if it rains. Regardless, I won't go jogging is still the consequent. So make sure that when you're looking for an antecedent, you look for the word if first, and the antecedent will be right after that. If you're wondering why it's important to know what the antecedent and the consequent are, it's because of the truth tables for conditional statements. If you look at the solutions column for a conditional statement, you'll see that the only time the statement if p then q is false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. If you haven't correctly identified the antecedent and the consequent in a statement, you might get its truth values wrong. Let's go back to this conditional statement again. I won't go jogging if it rains. Suppose you made that statement to me, and then I found out that you went jogging in the rain. Does that mean you lied to me when you said you wouldn't go jogging if it rains? Or were you telling me the truth? Well, let's find the part of the truth table that tells us whether or not you were lying. Before we do that, let's identify the antecedent and the consequent again. The antecedent is it rains. And it did rain, so that part of the statement is true. The consequent is I won't go jogging. But you did go jogging, so that statement is false. So the conditional statement, I won't go jogging if it rains, has a true antecedent and a false consequent, which means that the conditional statement is false. Sorry to say, when you told me I won't go jogging if it rains, you lied.